Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is attorney Sharp Rally and we have some breaking news on the STEM OPT third party placement. It seems the USCIS is confusing people right and left again and they change their their position again now uh, by uh, updating their website and there was a, an alert that came out and suddenly I, I saw it in the email and I had to do a video on that um, immediately. As you know, um, recently there was this big fuss with USCIS about third-party placement. For example, you work for a consulting company and they're placing you to an end client and they say STEM OPT student cannot be placed to the third-party client. Well, at this point, everybody got scared and we were even seeing them in the RFEs and they are still there on the RFEs and um, now suddenly on Friday, August uh, 17, they changed their mind, kind of, or they, they aligned themselves with what ICE is saying, that third-party placement is allowed, provided that it's a bona fide employment, empl employee-employer relationship, and also provided that you mean the training plan. Let's take one by one. The bon bona fide uh, relationship is actually not really defined uh, for students, so the employee-employee relationship, you can go back to the memo of the H-1B of 2010 where they kind of explain that you have, the employer should have control and dominion over the employee. That means the STEM OPT student will have to be controlled by the consulting company. Also, they mentioned that those who are going, the employer, that means the, the same employer who your consulting company has to has to sign on your I-983 and inform the DSO accordingly. Uh, lots of confusion. It's like ping pong going on here. But we go back to the to the source, and um, the employer-employee relationship requires control and dominion. What it means, they have to be able to control you. Now, the second thing is um, since now it's allowed. They, they require those two requirements, plus, of course, the other requirements. Um, number one, bona fide relationship, employer-employee uh, relationship. And number two, the training plan. Okay, So the training plan will have to be signed by your employer, which is, in this case, your the consulting company. And, uh, and um, if you look at their website here, I already opened it, uh, this... Uh, these are the requirements to have an OPT, and uh, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But the training plan is what the 983, when it was uh, issued, the 24-month STEM OPT, was telling people they have to be monitored, etc., etc. And the monitoring now, the question, does the monitoring have to be done with someone physically present at your third-party location or someone we uh, it can be done through electronic uh, control. Well, it's not very, very clear. Um, so it seems like argument can be made. I say it seems like arguments can be made that with now with technology, we can easily still control the employee, monitor the employee uh, at the third party location without having to ha place someone physically there. So that point now is seems to be to be the issue is um, will the people be able to meet and that was the same. Now the bigger problem is that we have already told everybody hey you have to stop working at your third party locations and suddenly lots of jobs were lost, a lot of companies are suffering and those people might not be able to go back to their to their to their employee employers because on August 9 everybody moved and some before that. Now this is really really um, disturbing because they issued those memos on Friday night, uh, Friday, I mean Fridays, and by the time it goes on their website, unless you pretty much are subscribed to their website or you're not busy doing anything at all, you will not even know what's happening. So this is breaking news. Uh, this is a breaking news that is coming from the DHS, uh, Department of Homeland Security, about STEM OPT third parties. So to recap, third party now is again re-allowed. Uh, provided the two conditions, employer-employee relationship, bona fide. Bona fide means genuine, means, for example, if you have a, a bunch of, of, of uh, 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 
EVC model, right? You have a bunch of vendors in between. You got to be careful how you're going to explain the monitoring. That might not work for bona fide employer-employee relationship. Although, if you show the chain, it might work uh, just like we do on H1B. Uh, so be careful if you're doing that. But this is kind of, although it's 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 really sad the way they have done it. They kind of scared everybody. Now suddenly coming back uh, on this. Um, it allows many students to continue working for their third-party clients. So if you need any help, uh, please call us at the office, 510-742-5887. And if you are having any plans to leave or something, again, don't leave until you talk to us. And anything I'm telling you today is purely educational. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. I'll put the link uh, the, uh, below the, um, this uh, video and please subscribe and this is another reason you should subscribe and and, uh, and press on the ring alert button because things are co going so fast that even on my website I'm not able to update them as fast as I can do it on YouTube so please check our website and we have a Facebook page facebook.com slash Law like our page uh, I will try to put updates uh, as they come and uh, good luck to all the students and if you again if you need help call us thank you